is the end for you. Time for my wedding with Peach. Jealous Mario. Right control stick to look around. B to jump. We can run around with the left control stick and look around with the right stick as we've already mentioned and B to continue jumping. We can also use the Z L button as our crouch so we can do our traditional long jump and backflip, but we can also now hold the crouch and roll, which will be very useful. We can either roll by pressing Z, no Y, while crouched, or if we crouch and then shake the Joy-Con, we can just roll like that, which is infinitely better. Detached Joy-Cons is highly recommended for this game. Just gonna say that now. Who are you? So sorry for running away like that. You startled me, and I do startle easily. I saw what happened earlier. You've been through quite the ringer. You've landed in the Cap Kingdom. We've been under attack by the same monster that gave you such a tu a tra a trouncing. And to make matters worse, the fiend has kidnapped my little sister. I'd hoped to give chase to that monster in a ship of my own. Unfortunately, all of our ships were attacked or were wrecked in the attack. Although now that I think of it, I'm fairly certain there's a functioning ship in the next kingdom over. I could get us there if only I could reach the top of Top Hat Tower, which is being guarded by the mo monster's henchmen. You know, it seems we're after the same thing. Perhaps we should team up. Let's see if we can't help those two. Not your style. How about this? Cappy is now your companion. So yes, now we have some more abilities to go over now that we have Cappy. We can shake the Joy-Con to throw, or we can press Y to throw, which is probably better in some circumstances. Most of the time we're going to just press Y, but there'll be a few times when shaking means we can go faster. If we keep shaking, uh, depending on which direction we uh, move the Joy-Con in, when we throw Cappy, he'll actually lock onto a a target that's nearby, which can be very useful for things. 
We can also just hold Cappy on items by just holding down the button. Anyway, we get some coins to collect here. And something that's a big upgrade since every other Mario game before is if we die, there are no lives. We just lose 10 coins. So that's something to keep in mind. And I also forgot to mention that with our ground pound, if we press Y in mid ground pound, we can actually dive forward, which will be very useful. To increase our ability some more, when we throw Cappy and... Oh, hang on. When we throw Cappy and then ground pound dive onto him, we can actually bounce off of him once before having to fall to the ground. We can't bounce on him twice because otherwise we just go straight down. But yeah, all these moves are very useful and usually can be used to uh, use together in some circumstances. But anyway, those posters were of uh, Bowser and Peach's wedding. Let me just get a better look at that. If we also the camera is a little bit different in this game because uh, instead of tapping to change directions, we just have to hold it down in a direction that we want to go. Except of because of um, I'm pretty sure it's. Hang on, let me get out of first person by ta tapping down the right stick. I'm pretty sure. No, it is. It is actually yeah, uh, holding in the direction that you want to look. But anyway, let's go up here and talk to this hat. I can see the monster's minions from here, but all I can do is float helplessly and watch. With Cappy, we can actually do certain things with, um, things are, we can interact with objects around the world like these sprouts here that turn into flowers. And we just got a, a heart. We can't really do anything with that yet, but I'll be explaining what hearts are for later. It's a bit obvious at what they do. But, for now, if we just collect it at full health, we, um, just get coins. So, I headed for Top Hat Tower. The entrance is up ahead. We can go that way. Travel tip. This is just showing stuff. We can break these boxes by throwing Cappy into them a few times. Which gives us a few coins, but not a lot. And this switch over here, which we would spin to activate in Super Mario Galaxy, if we hold Cappy on it long enough, it activates. This is pretty much the basic work that we're going to have throughout the game for now. But anyway, let me actually get hit by one of these little odd little fellows. They seem to know you and do not like you. But anyway, if we get hit by them, we take a bit of damage, which is represented by our health in the top right. We have 3 HP total. When it gets down to zero, we die. Uh, but if I activate this and get a heart, instead of getting coins, we actually recover our health. So that's how that is. But anyway, this is a cap door, which means we have to throw Cappy into it to open it. It's not going to be a, a problem where we're not going to have Cappy to be able to open doors, but it's just something to keep in mind. But anyway, inside Top Hat Tower, we can act, hit these blocks in different ways by throwing Cappy into them, or by ground pounding into them. Uh, but also, we've got some water here. The water is fairly simple. If we go under it, we will have the, um, the air meter. And then if we just press B to swim, we can just do that. It's a very different swimming in this game compared to other games because you don't technically swim, I guess. You just have to hold in a direction and you'll swim. Uh, but you can also press uh, the jump button to jump through it quickly. Uh, and if we are under the water and ground pound and then press Y, or just on the surface, we can actually swim forward a little bit more. So that can be useful, but not all the time. So for now, Let's just grab some more coins, and let's go over to these frogs over here. That ledge is awfully high. Hmm, I know. Try throwing me at a frog.
You captured a frog. This is our first instance of a capture in this game. Using Cappy's abilities, we can capture and control different enemies or animals around the world. Uh, we can move around normally and hold Y to go faster as a frog. And we can also jump fairly high as a frog as well. Each capture usually has a second ability where if you shake, you'll do something. And as a frog, if we shake, we jump really high. Wish there are some coins up there, but there's not really any point to getting those coins, so... For now, let's just go up this way. Collecting coins from these rings that give us three at a time. I don't think we can actually fight enemies extremely well as a frog. Uh, we still can though, but just a little bit difficult because of our hitbox. But anyway, let's just keep going. And if we can make it all the way to the top up here. Okay, this is where we need to be. So, I believe if we press uh, ZL, we uncapture an item, or object, or animal thing. Uh, which means we can return to normal. And if we let the capture stay there without capturing it too long, it just disappears and goes back to where it was when we found it. But anyway, in this chest up here, which we can open with Cappy, is a life up heart. Which, just like in Super Mario Galaxy, increases our health by three. And if we go under four, it re our maximum health returns back to three. We cannot get any more than six, but that's all we need to know for now, so let's keep going. This is a flagpole. They are very important to touch and make the flag become Mario's icon. We'll explain... We'll go over what that is useful, useful for later. But for now... That monster has ruined everything. Bad days do happen, but you've got to keep a stiff upper brim. Can't you do something to help us? Who would be responsible for this? I'm so scared I can hardly move. That monster's long-eared henchmen are still on top of... Still on Top Hat Tower. I say, do be careful. The boss wa warned me there'd be a fella with a with a mustache coming along. Guess we ought to introduce ourselves. We're the wedding planners for the ha for the happy couple. They call us the Brutals. We got that treasure we needed, so we ain't got no more business in these parts. Of course, roughing up go goody two shoes meddlers uh, was in the contract, so I guess we still. Got a little work to do. So, the Brutals are kind of mini-bosses that we're going to be seeing throughout the game. Usually you have to take off their hats because if they're wearing a hat you can't damage them. And they have different phases to their own separate fights. Which, if we bounce his hat into the wall, the correct one, he will come out of his spinning attack and if we have him try to attack us without taking off his hats first we can just jump on him straight away we're also in the middle of a fight so the ring around this arena stops us from leaving most impressive let's use this wire to make our way onward but anyway Hey everybody, it's Blue Toad, and welcome to Super Mario Odyssey.
our first power moon. Ooh, yeah, what a ride. And we made it to the Cascade Kingdom. Sorry, still a bit amped from capturing a power line. Must collect myself. There should be an old airship somewhere around here. Let's see if we can, if we can't find it. So, let's collect this flag here at the Waterfall Basin. And let's get started by going down here. Because in each kingdom, we have purple coins to collect. The amount of purple coins varies from 50 to 100. It's either one of those two. In this kingdom, it says it's we have 3 out of 50. Every time you collect purple coins, they tell you how many in that kingdom you have. And there are other things we can use to actually figure that out as well. But anyway, this cap thing here, if we um, throw a cap at it, becomes a platform, but only lasts for a little bit of time. So that's going to be useful. And I believe... Could look around a bit more. What does this say? Is this a... Yeah, it's a travel tip. Home and cap throw. We already know that. So, let's take out some of these enemies that are just around here. And we've also got some rocks around here that we can either hit with Cappy or just walk into. Now, let's quickly jump down here for some purple coins. And grab those. Also, I forgot to mention the ground pound jump. If you ground pound and then jumps directly afterward, you get a little bit of extra height, which can be very useful. But anyway, let's capture this, um, this chain chomp and hold in the direction opposite of where we want it to go, because as soon as we let go, it's going to send the chain chomp flying and usually break stuff. Not everything is breakable, but this was, so let's grab a power moon. Multi moon atop the falls. Oh, we found a power moon. What a lucky break. This will come in handy to power the airship. Have you seen any anything like it? No, I have not. The power moons are beautiful. Also, whenever there's a power moon on top of a platform like this, that means that it's a mission specific power moon to the level and will usually activate something to allow you to continue through the level, like this pillar thing that fell down, allowing us to get across. Ah, there it is. This is what we were looking for. It's looking a bit more rough than I had expected. Ah, no, no, oh no. It's just an older model. I'm certain it can still fly. Let's give it a shot, shall we? Just throw me on that globe there. Huh? Nothing's happening. That power moon must not give have given the ship enough energy. I wonder if we can find more around here. So yes, the amount of uh, moons that you need is told by the globe if you're near it. But also, underneath your coins has little markers that are empty. And you need, once those markers are all full, then you have enough moons to move on. So, let's keep moving. And let's find some more power moons. I'm also going to get some of those just because coins will be useful as we go. There's pretty much never a time until like even past the completed version of the game. Like once you have everything in the game you'll still, still need coins for more things if you want to get everything. But anyway, let's go up here and grab these. We can also collect coins with our, our, our Cappy, so but for now, let's just grab this gigantic chain chomp, which it's easy to capture enemies that are charging towards you if you hold Cappy in the air just for a few seconds. So you'd like just hold it there and then have the enemy walk into Cappy basically. But anyway, if we spin by rotating the control stick, we can actually spin like this, which means we can spin jump, but we can also throw Cappy to do a spin around us 
which can be useful for some things, but I also, I believe, if we... Hang on. If we spin and shake the controller, it makes it a lot easier to consistently do it. Because if I just do it like... If I just do it like that, it works. Oh, I guess it's actually not that bad. But I feel like there's actually another... I feel like there's another... Yeah, you can- if you kind of do it like that, you can kind of also just move around normally. And let that happen. But anyway, let me just quickly check over here. Okay, well there's a cat peach- a pixel cat peach here. Which we can throw Cappy at to get a heart from. But anyway, let's just keep going this way if we can. Taking out these enemy things. I don't know what they're called. Ah, uh, but for now, let's- Grab this chain chomp, and let's smash this wall over here. And now for one of my favorite gimmicks in the game. If we go through this pixel pipe, we end up... <laughs> oh my, we've gone flat, and rather blocky at that. We get to 2D 8-bit Mario sections, which I really love the concept of, and I just want... I just want more. Basically, we can grab coins, break blocks, beat up enemies. It's all basic Mario Bros. stuff. And there's also sometimes hidden blocks we can use to get to secret things, like a pixel power moon behind the waterfall. So yes, we can collect moons inside of these 2D sections as well. There's usually at least one secret power moon in a 2D section. But anyway, we can just jump out of it to return to normal. Let's grab that flag. I bet there's a spectacular view from the top of that pole, which if we grab onto works like the poles in previous games. There's also a life up heart up here that we can grab. We can just look around the whole area from here. It's very cool. There's some purple coins that I'll need to go back for, but for now, let me also grab one of these chain jumps. And if I grab the one that's further away from where I want it, and actually go over here... Maybe... If the other one wants to actually come or get away... I believe, if we knock a Chain Chomp into another Chain Chomp, it actually chain reactions it... To send it in a direction, depending on which way we've aimed it. What's this? You say you need to repair some silly old airship? Why, I could never part with my precious power moons. It sounds to me like someone wants to be a snack for my adorable chain chompkins. And this is a fifth brutal boss that we're gonna have to deal with on a few occasions. We just need to capture the chain chomp and then get away from it. If you're shaking as a chain chomp, you can actually dash a little bit, and that is extremely useful. We can see where its path is going to be by the arrows on the ground. And we can also... Well, when we try to capture it, we also have to take out its hat first, so you just need to hit it twice. Let's grab that, and then let go. And let's grab this. You've done it, and now we've got a multi-moon. It's as strong as three power moons combined. It should get the airship moving in no time. Let's see if we can't make this work. Throw me on that globe. So yeah, multi-moons count as three power moons. And are usually collected after defeating 
a kingdom boss. But anyway, let's see if we have enough for the Odyssey. The Odyssey is restored. We have enough fuel to reach the Sand Kingdom. Let's go save those two. Why don't you take the helm? Just select Sand Kingdom and press A and we'll be off. So we can select a kingdom to go to. And then go there by confirming. We could get more Power Moons in the Cas Cascade Kingdom, because after getting a Multi-Moon, there's usually more Moons that open up in a level that you couldn't get previously. But for now, let's actually go to the Sand Kingdom, I guess. So, how do you like me as a captain's hat? Pretty classy, wouldn't you say? Now then, where were we? That monster's name is Bowser? Well, we'll chase him down in no time in the Odyssey. Seeing as how we've got some time to kill, let's review some useful skills. And now it tells you stuff that you should know, but usually you probably already need know what you need to do. If you need to review, need some more review, you might want to look at the action guide. And then it takes you to the action guide and you need to press B to cancel out. It's always there for your pers uh, perusal. Just open the menu of plus and select the action guide. But I, I usually just skip past this text, but you can't. You always have to have it tell you about it. We should discuss the Sand Kingdom too. Now for the good part. As you've no doubt pieced together, it is entirely covered in sand. And as you can imagine, it gets quite hot. Hmm. There are some ruins there, and an artifact called the Binding Band, that links people forever. Like a wedding ring. And this Bowser seems like just the sort of creep who would want to steal a priceless antiquity for his sham wedding. Up the highest tower. Huzzah! I declare the maiden voyage of the Odyssey a complete success. But why is it so cold? I thought the deserts were supposed to be hot. Huh? The top of that tower is shining. But how could that be? Could it be a power moon? So, if, so whenever you go to a new kingdom, uh, Cappy will tell you a little bit about it, and as you can see, we're going to need a lot more moons to go to another kingdom if we were, are going to do that. There's also, 
a lot more power moons to collect here, and also purple coins. But anyway, we're going to be looking at that next time. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.